Let me ask most of you will know me, but uh, I'm Ken Navy, uh, former chairman of Huddersfield Town, uh, currently chairman of the Huddersfield Giants, and uh, uh, also life president of Huddersfield Town. And it's a delight to welcome you to the John Smith Stadium. I hope you are, you're in for a great evening. And um, I want us to welcome uh, Nigel Farage, who's not coming on yet, but let's just give him a round of applause. Yeah. Now, historically, we've always been very proud of our parliament in this country. It is, it is the mother of all parliaments, the House of Commons. And yet now, we have a situation where <coughs> We've lost, sadly, that pride in the House of Commons. Yeah. 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 Today's Parliament has lost touch with the people. Today's Parliament has lost touch with the country. And I believe today's Parliament has lost touch with democracy. It's now my pleasure to draw your attention to a video of Richard Tice, the chairman of the Brexit party. Thank you very much. There's a huge amount of scaremongering that's going on from parts of the establishment who are looking for any excuse to stop this or to delay it. Yeah, the instruction of the people wasn't leave subject to a deal, it was leave. Leave. It's not, it wasn't even Brexit, it's actually worse than remaining in the European Union. I want a clean, proper Brexit. All right, be very clear. Clear. What we need is leadership that is prepared to either negotiate a good deal or walk away. No deal, no problem, no money will save this billion from spending back in the UK. Garbage in equals garbage out with these economic models. There's a wonderful opportunity as long as we leave the customs union because that's crucial. We can then have a free port, and free ports generate thousands and thousands of manufacturing jobs. If we have no deal, we're not going to pay 39 billion unless our negotiations are incredibly weak, and that actually really concentrates the minds of the European Union, because if they haven't got 39 of billion of our money, they are blasted. Oh, come on. Let's be clear. We all know in business that no deal is better than a bad deal. Of course it's true. Every business person knows that, and this is the worst deal ever in history, to pay 39 billion pounds for nothing guaranteed in return. Please welcome to the stage, Richard Dykes. it is to be here in Huddersfield, the home of the mighty giants. And Huddersfield Town Football Club. Obviously, I'm, I feel a bit of an imposter as a Liverpool fan, but we can't all be perfect. Um, anyway, it's... I know. Um, but anyway, thank you very much. So, I'm Richard Tice. Uh, I, I have a day job, believe it or not, uh, which is that uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been involved in setting up small businesses, medium businesses, and large businesses. I've built thousands of homes, creating tens of thousands of construction jobs, bringing hundreds of millions of pounds into the UK. And I, I used to be a member of a certain political party. I won't mention the name because I resigned a few weeks ago when I accepted the invitation to be the chairman of the new Brexit party. And, uh, love to see Roger at the back there. And as you may have gathered, we've been quite busy in the four and a half weeks that we've been going. Um, Easter was cancelled, all the bank holidays was cancelled, sleep's basically been cancelled. Um, but we've been quite busy, we're making real progress. And before we carry on, just, just look at the launch video uh, of the new Brexit party. We have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. We are standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hard-working, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit Party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit Party now.
We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. He's on fantastic form, as you'll hear later. Now, a bit of audience participation. How many of you, hands up, are already registered supporters of the Brexit Party? Yay! Wonderful. There's a few naughty, cheeky chappies who've not yet joined. Go home this evening, pay your 25 quid, join up. It's absolutely vital for the democracy of our country. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the truth is we've been humiliated as a nation by a Prime Minister who's written not one, but two begging letters to bungling bureaucrats in Brussels and overseas leaders asking how we should conduct ourselves as a nation. It's an absolute age. It's disgusting, it's disgraceful, and it's got to stop. Incompetent leadership, incapable negotiators, and MPs trying to do dodgy, dirty, backroom deals to basically mean that we would leave only in name only. MPs who are willing to sell our country down the river, putting us into a straitjacket and giving the keys to those people in Brussels. A civil service that have shown themselves to be simply not up to the job. That's why we launched the Brexit Party, because, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to take on the establishment. It's time to take on the vested interests, the lobbying groups like the CBI. It's time to take on the civil service and reform it, because all of us know that actually what is needed to govern our great country is competent, capable people with common sense politics that works for the people. It's not that difficult. We've got some fantastic candidates for the Yorkshire and the Humber region who we'll hear from shortly. But I say to you, tell your family. Interesting. Interesting. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your friends of friends. We need this to go viral. Never before has it been so important to vote in a European election. Because we need to send a very clear message back to Westminster. Yes. We meant it the first time. Leave means... Leave. Leave. I didn't hear you. Leave means... Leave. Thank you very much. Excellent. We need to send that message... Because we, what? Yeah, they're on holiday. We're working away. But that's good news because we're going to win, and with your help, we'll win big. Because we know that with competent, confident leadership, those of us who believe in Britain know how much better we can run this country. And so, over to the first of our speakers is someone who. Uh, was an international businessman. He was then Director General of the British Chambers of Commerce. He resigned just before the referendum because he knew that his views to leave were at odds with the establishment. Before we welcome John Longworth to the stage, let's just see him in action on the video. The problem is, of course, that trust in the politicians is completely broken down because they have lied so many times. I mean, our own Prime Minister has said over 120 times in Parliament, on the record, we would leave on the 29th of March. Look what has happened here. You use the 39 billion to be able to cut taxes, to be able to invest in infrastructure. You remove tariffs selectively on things that we do not produce ourselves to reduce the cost of living and give people more space. There may be a problem in terms of parliamentary numbers, but the British people voted for Brexit. And the Conservatives party will suffer very badly for letting the British people down and actually breaking their own commitments in the manifesto. Please welcome to the stage, John Longworth. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Excellent. It's about democracy and the way the country is run, isn't it? Yes! 
it's not just about Brexit, how important Brexit is, it's about democracy now. When I resigned from the British Chambers in March 2016 to fight to leave the EU, I wrote an article called The Peasants' Revolt, comparing us to the peasants in the medieval times. And I said, beware, because the establishment are vicious in pursuit of their own vested interests. And so it's proved to be. We did not win that referendum by six votes. We won it by 1.4 million. If it had been a general election, it would have been a landslide. Two thirds of constituencies in the UK voted to leave, three quarters in England and Wales, and yet they've ignored it. Let's take, have a look at what the parties have done. First of all, there's the Liberal Anti-Democratic Party. They have tried their very best to undermine and reverse the result of that referendum. And then we've got the two major parties. In their manifestos, they said we'd leave. We'd leave the customs union and the single market. They voted for Article 50. They implemented in UK law that we would leave in 2019. And they've ignored it. The Labour Party, we now know, are the party for the few, not the many. And we know that because if they were not, they would not want a customs union. A customs union that puts taxes on things you buy every week. The things that we buy, like children's clothes, footwear, TVs, and all of our food cost us more because of that customs union. To keep rich French farmers and rich German manufacturers in the style to which they become accustomed. Yeah. And then we've got the Tory party, the epitome of the establishment. They just want a bigger slice of the power cake of the European Union. An ever diminishing cake, but they want a bigger slice. So here we are, the Brexit party, with your help, not only can we change politics forever, but we can also make us all better off. Because actually, if we leave the European Union with no deal on world trade terms, the terms on which most trade is carried out today, including trade from the UK and the EU, we will actually boost the British economy. We will be wealthier as a nation, and we will actually have got our freedom and sovereignty back. So with your help, in my home county of Yorkshire, if you vote for the Brexit party, we will change politics forever. Thank you. John Longworth, ladies and gentlemen. Almost all of the candidates never imagined a few weeks ago that they would be standing to be an MEP. But they've shown the courage and the bravery to put their head above the parapet, to take all the incoming fire, the flack, the grief that comes with it. And our next candidate has also lived in Yorkshire for over 20 years, spent the last five years in Beverley. He works for the Freedom Association. Please welcome to the stage, Andrew Allison. Please welcome to the stage, Andrew Allison. Well, thank you very much, everyone. It's really great to be here. Now, this morning we had a fantastic walk around in Pontefract with Nigel. We parked our tanks on a vet Cooper's lawn. And along with all the other Ramonas, she should be very worried. They don't care about their constituents, they treat them with contempt. And the Brexit party is here to go after them, and we are not going away. Now, during the referendum campaign, it was in March 2016 to be precise, the Education Secretary at the time was someone who you may have heard of before, it's Nicky Morgan. No, oh, come on, better than that. Nicky, thank you. And she said that all those who were considering voting leave in the referendum should think about their children and their grandchildren's future. Now, I, exactly, we were. But I was fuming at the time because what she was really saying is that those thinking of voting leave don't give a damn about their kids and their grandkids. It was the lowest blow that you could possibly make. 
At the time, my wife was pregnant, and our son was born actually on the 19th of June, 2016, four days before the referendum. I didn't get any sleep for a variety of reasons. <laughs> but one of the main reasons that I was campaigning to, uh, to, to leave the European Union was because of his future. I want him to be a citizen of a sovereign country outside the clutches of the European Union, and the anti-democratic protection racket that is the European Union. So on the wee small hours of the 24th of June, my then five-day-old boy was in my arms when David Dimbleby called it for, for leave. Now I imagine most of you maybe were popping champagne corks and jumping up and down, hugging each other. Yeah, no, I just got him to sleep. There was no way was I going to do that. <laughs> Not at all. But that's one of the reasons why I'm standing here today. The political class in this country do not give a damn about democracy. They're trying to shut it down. And I want my son to grow up in a democratic, free society where we make our own laws, where we decide our own future, decide what's in the best interests of this great country of ours. I voted leave. And you voted leave because you want the best possible future for your children and grandchildren. That's the reason why. Now, as Richard said, I, I never thought at the beginning of this year I'd be a candidate for the Brexit party. But I did realise a couple of months ago that it's something that I would have to consider. And I'm pleased that I did. What we are witnessing here is the biggest stitch-up in British political history. Now, will Labour deliver Brexit? No! Will the Tories? No! No, they want us to remain an accustomed union, trapped in this Brexit in name only, half in, half out hell. It's the only way to describe it. In many ways, it's worse than remaining an EU member. And the EU, well, Guy Verhofstadt, to, to be precise. Actually, better than that, come on. He wants us to be a colony of the EU. Can you believe it? A colony of the EU. Well, I have news for them. The British people never surrender. Yeah. Never, never. So please make sure you go to your polling station on the 23rd of May and place a cross against the Brexit party candidates. But more importantly, tell your family and friends what you're doing. Urge them to do the same. Now, changing politics for good is our aspiration. With your help, we will make it a reality. Thank you. Andrew Allison, another great candidate. The quality of candidates that applied to help us is truly outstanding. I genuinely believe that the candidates standing for the Brexit party are the highest quality candidates that have ever stood for election in any political campaign, any election in a generation. Because great successful people have said, enough is enough. This country deserves to be so much better led. Our next speaker needs little introduction, but she is a true inspiration to us all. <laughs> now she's actually standing for the South West, but she's careering around the country. It is our app. Now, she's, she's, the great thing is, this is her third career. She had a brief spell for 23 years as a member of... We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since go. Anthony Eden. We've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of Sometimes technology works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a bit like my computer. But I hadn't finished, actually, because the truth is, that was Anne's only first phase when she was a Member of Parliament for that, that political party for 23 years. Then she realised that much better things were to come, and she would teach the country how to dance in Strictly Come Dancing. Not content with that, a little bit of celebrity Big Brother, but now, the biggest battle, the greatest phase of her career, now that she has joined the Brexit party. Before we welcome Anne to the stage, let's just see her on the video. We are in a complete mess. We've got the worst Prime Minister since Anthony Eden. 
we've got the worst leader of the opposition in the entire history of the Labour Party, and we've got the worst parliament since Oliver Cromwell. And with that combination, we are actually engaged in the most important international negotiations for 50 years. No, let me finish this sentence, Adam, then over to you. There's a growing disengagement between the people and parliament. So what I want is an overwhelming, an overwhelming uh, Brexit victory on May the 23rd. That we've That's seen. what I want. Please welcome to the stage. Right. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Well, actually, I want to ask you four questions. Do you believe that it is possible to control our own laws and remain in the EU? No. Do you believe it's possible to control our own borders and remain in the EU? No. Do you believe it's possible to control our own trade and remain in the EU? No. And do you believe it is possible to be governed by our own democratically elected government and remain in the EU? Well, those four no's are why 17.4 million people voted to leave. And when those snooty, patronising people in Hampstead and Islington and places like that, or even Yvette Cooper, when they say, oh, poor dears, they didn't know what they were voting for, we knew exactly what they were voting for. We also knew what they were voting for. They were voting to keep Britain unable to determine her own laws, control her own borders, set up her own trade deals and be governed by her own democratically elected government. That's what they were voting for and we never want to let them forget that. They were voting that Britain should never be independent. <laughs> now, this gentleman, Mr. Uh, Verhofstadt, <laughs> he says that we have become a colony. Well, I would just like to remind him, if he's ever studied any history at all, I would just like to remind him that colonies have this little habit. They rebel. Yes. And they assert their own independence. Yes. And if he doubts that, perhaps he should try asking America. <laughs> But in saying that we were a colony, he gave away the agenda of the EU. Yes. And I have lost count of the number of people who have said to me, from all age groups, that although they voted with conviction, remain in the referendum, the way the EU has treated us has convinced them that if they had another chance, they'd vote leave. Yeah. And our message to Westminster is really terribly simple. Either they let Britain leave the EU, or we will make them leave Westminster. Yeah. And by leave, we do 
you actually mean, Lee? We don't mean stay in a customs union. We don't mean stay aligned to the single market. We don't mean taking their direction on what and how we do our trade deals. No. What we mean by leave is a clean break with the EU. Of course we want good trade relations with them afterwards. Of course we want to cooperate with them on security matters. But we do not want to be run by them and we will not be run by them. And that is our very simple message to our politicians. One of the things I most enjoyed about the local elections was the expression on Jeremy Corbyn's face. <laughs> they had been boasting that they were going to win about 400 seats and they lost 82. <laughs> and he looked just a little bit unhappy. <laughs> and that was the moment that Theresa May should have seized. And she should have said, come on, Jeremy, we've had the message from the people, we have got to leave. <laughs> Instead of which, what did she say? Oh, Jeremy, would you like a customs union? <laughs> Certainly, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy, do you want to stay aligned to the single market? Oh, certainly, Jeremy. <coughs> oh, Jeremy. Do you want to keep us under their laws? Just tell me which laws, Jeremy, and I'll make sure it happens. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is also the way that she has approached negotiations with the EU. Yeah. And we have been deceived. Yeah. Do you remember Theresa May coming back from the EU with her deal and assuring us time after time after time that that deal would not lock us into a customs union forever. Yes. But she went beyond that. She produced some very highly edited legal advice which seemed to uphold that view. And then Parliament actually demanded that the full advice was published. And what did it say? The government's own legal advisor said, in terms, it could keep us tied into the custom union forever. And that was the moment when I knew that at some point I was going to have to leave the Conservative Party because we were lied to. In the end, I didn't even have to leave because they threw me out. <laughs> but they didn't refund my subscription. <laughs> so, our message is very, very simple in these European elections. There is only one way to send that final warning shot to Westminster only one way to do it, and that is for a huge, overwhelming Brexit party victory in these elections. Go for it. Isn't she great? As I, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, just warming up, isn't she? An inspiration to us all. Um, absolutely fantastic. Uh, and so to our next speaker. Again, never imagined that he would be standing to be a member of the European Parliament. He was born in Leeds, 
So he knows Yorkshire. He's a historian, but he's also worked in Brussels. So he knows what he's talking about, and he wrote a fantastic book on the European Union. Please welcome to the stage, James Hartfield. brilliant thing. What a brilliant thing we have done. And we're just beginning to do it. It is going to be so good. We are really going to show them. We're going to change yes. politics. We really are going to do it. I, you know, I, I, it's a bit like, especially after Anne, it's a bit like having the hand of fate on your shoulder. <laughs> and um, I, I, I keep getting this message as I'm listening to the other side. Listening to, <laughs> listening to the other side, making their story. And what they're really saying is, we're not good enough. That's the real meaning of it. They don't like what we say. They don't like what we say as voters. And when they say that if we don't have a deal, we'll be screwed, what they really mean is that our business, our work, it's not good enough to succeed. They think that a deal hiding behind the European Union is the best way because they really don't think that people in Britain can compete on the world stage. Just like they don't value your vote, they don't value our work either. It's on my shoulders now. Uh, my grandfather, John Patterson, worked here at Imperial Chemicals Industries for 30 years making dyes, uh, he was an electrician in the shop. He would have looked at this in amazement because he knew a simple thing, which surely everybody knows, is that it's not the deal. It's not the deal between the Prime Minister and the uh, General Secretary of the European Union. It's the whole question is, have you made something worthwhile? Have you made something good that somebody else wants to buy? Have you? That's the truth of it. I think, I think, I think people in Britain can make some great stuff out of Syngenta now. They're making uh, fertilizers to feed the world, to help feed the world. That's what's happening there now. Um, we can do this thing. We can change politics in Britain. But more than that, we can be confident that's not a bad story as we keep being told. It's a great story. It's the chance to do something that we will be proud of to make our country uh, succeed uh, in the years that come. This isn't something to be afraid of. It's something to be excited by. It's the beginning of a new story. I've got nothing else but vote. Vote, vote, get everybody you know out on the 23rd. And we're going on, and Peterborough, and more. This is just the beginning of where we take it. Thank you. Well done, James. Richard, where's the BBC? Where's the BBC? Actually, do you know, it's a very good question. I did. It's good news. It's, it's lovely, to, actually, it's lovely to see them. It's a shame Andrew Marr's not here. <coughs> the thing is, though, ladies and gentlemen, when we vote... When we vote, when we vote for the Brexit party, I want everybody to understand what we're voting for. We are voting for a WTO Brexit. The second thing we're voting for, and we've made this very clear in the last few days, we're going to demand that our elected MEPs will have a significant role in the negotiating team. Because the truth is, the truth is, Westminster had their chance and they blew it. Utter shambles. Whereas the sort of quality of negotiator who is our next speaker, 
He's been involved in international business and business deals all over the world. He knows what a great nation we are. He knows that we should take our rightful place around the world. He's negotiated deals all over the world. It's fantastic to have him as a candidate. Please welcome to the stage, Jake Pugh. Please welcome to the stage, Jake Pugh. Hello. Hello. It's more like it. Um, so, although Richard said I'm not a professional politician, that doesn't mean I don't have secrets. So, <laughs> so because I'm amongst friends, I'm going to tell you a secret, but only if you promise to keep it. <laughs> so, whilst I am proud, incredibly happy to be representing standing to represent Yorkshire and the Humber, I was actually brought up the other side of the Pennines. <laughs> how, 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 to, how to get an audience against you. Thank you. So, as we've, as we've heard before, people often say that Westminster is the mother of parliaments, but in fact, we haven't been a democracy for that long. Because it was only in 1928 that all women were given the right to vote. So, for many people in here, it was either your mother or your grandmother who was the first woman in your family who had the right to vote. Universal suffrage took centuries to win but it was only a few short decades before the politicians started transferring those powers, democratic rights, from Westminster to Brussels. And they were transferred to people who we neither elect nor can remove. And then in 2016, we were finally asked, we were asked, are you happy with the relationship with the EU? Or do you want it to change? And all the senior politicians of the day told us two things. Cameron, Osborne, Clegg, wait for it, Blair, no, 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 wait for it, Lord Adonis. <laughs> you watch the video. Anyway, um, they told us two things. It was the biggest decision we'd made in generations. And the second thing was that they would respect the vote, no second referendums, no renegotiations. Right? And then, and we all listened. We listened to our lords and masters. We know that because it was the biggest political exercise in British political history. More people turned out to vote than anybody else, than ever had happened before. And then we're told, oh, but you, you didn't quite listen. You, you didn't really understand, and you didn't really know what you were voting for. Well, if we didn't know what we were voting for then, we certainly do now. Yeah. So, so we demand nothing less than the full restoration of our democratic rights and freedoms. Because, and the question is why? Because it is only through democracy that the powerful are held to account. Because in our society, it is only at the ballot box where we are all equal. Rich, poor, old, young, especially those without advantages or privileges, the less privileged, sorry, and those without a voice. They count the same as the rich, the powerful, and the connected. That is the essence of our British democracy.
It's the essence of your British democracy. So I ask you please, on the 23rd of May, to vote for the Brexit party, and when you put your cross on the paper, think of every woman in your family that never had the right to vote, but also think of those less fortunate than ourselves, because it is for them that we want to change politics for good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. And so, ladies and gentlemen, to our next speaker. We have all sorts of varied skill sets. Our next speaker was almost a professional opera singer. If you're really nice, you never know, she might sing. <laughs> um, she was a fishmonger for a number of years. So she knows what a huge opportunity taking back control of our fishing waters is to coastal communities up and down the country. For the last few years, She's been campaigning for the Eurosceptic cause, for Leave. She's been setting up groups all over the country because she knew that there was trouble ahead after the referendum. Please give a huge round of applause. It's fantastic to have her here. Lucy Harris. Please welcome to the stage, Lucy Harris. Wow, there's so many of you here. I recognise a few faces as well. So many of you. Um, so, hi. Yeah, uh, as Richard was saying, I have been going across the country, meeting so many of you, and getting to know all of you. And what's been really apparent to me is that the day after the referendum, when we voted and we woke up and we saw all those uh, votes coming through, how did we feel? We felt absolutely amazing. I know I did. I felt fantastic. But where's it gone? Where's it gone? We have to keep that alive, which is why I've set up so many social groups across the UK. It's so that we can talk over a beer, it's so that we can chat and make sure that it stays alive. And that's what I wanted to see. But that's not the only reason I've been doing what I've been doing for the past three years. I have been absolutely disgusted by the way people have been described in the media as stupid and racist. Good people. They are good people. We are good people. The way we are talked about is unacceptable. It says that they don't have the patience to listen to us. It says that they're quick to judge us malevolently. And we should not accept that. But I do see a little bit of hope. Throughout all the communities I've been to, I've met so many wonderful characters, amazing people, who were open enough to let me into their communities, tell me their histories, their traditions, their stories. And I've been absolutely amazed at their ability to keep going and keep that feeling alive, what Brexit means to us. And what does Brexit mean to you? To me, it means freedom. To me, it means opportunity. And for me, it means excitement. So, this is not about left or right. This is about right or wrong. And what is wrong... And what is wrong is telling ordinary people that they're stupid, racist or thick and that they don't matter. What is wrong is ignoring them. But above all, what is wrong is denying the most colossal democratic mandate this country has ever seen. So, I'm going to put my faith in you in the room, because I believe in you. They might not believe in you down in Westminster, but I believe in you. I believe you can make a difference. I believe you can go out there and change the world. Every single one of you in this room. So get out there. 
put the tick in the box and let's bring this home. Thank you. Lucy quite rightly talks about opportunity because we all know that Brexit is a huge opportunity. It's an opportunity to be embraced with ambition, with enthusiasm, with hope, with renewal opportunities in the regions, with confidence and with belief. And our penultimate speaker has done business all over the world, so he knows the opportunities that are out there. And he has that confidence. And it's fantastic. He never again, again, never expected to be standing for a political position as a member of the European Parliament. But like the others, he said, enough is enough. I've got to do something about this. Please welcome to the stage, Christopher Barker. Please welcome to the stage, Christopher Barker. Thank you, Richard. Good evening, Huddersfield. Good. Hey up, hey up, hey up, lass. I'm, I'm Christopher Barker. I'm an innovator, I'm a businessman, and I haven't been active in politics before, so let me just share with you what just brought me into it. <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> excuse me, just the other side of Bradford from here, I was brought up believing in a fair and tolerant society where my vote's worth no more than yours, where those who represent us are no no mightier, no more glorious than you or me, right? And where the laws that govern us are only written by those we've elected. And that those, those people will do what they promise and that we're free to fire them at the ballot box. But in recent years, that's not exactly how our precious democracy has been run, is it? You know, 58% of us in Yorkshire and the Humber voted to leave the European Union and three years later we still haven't left. And Barry Shearman, right, our MP... <laughs> He opposed Brexit, but then he voted in Parliament in February 2017 to give the EU notice that we were leaving, just in time to make us think he was on the side of the good folk of Huddersfield so he could get re-elected. And then he voted that EU law should override our own UK law, even after we'd left the Union. He voted to keep us in the European single market, the very system of trading regulations we'd expressly been told we were leaving. He voted then against us leaving the EU at all. In March just now, he voted that we mustn't <clears throat> leave the EU without first agreeing to a withdrawal deal. I can tell you, Richard can tell you, any competent negotiator will tell you that if you tell the other side we won't walk away from the table without making a deal, you're telling the other side, name your price for us to get out of here. Yeah. And, and, and guess what Monsieur Barnier's just done? <clears throat> And now, just last month, he voted for a permanent, comprehensive customs union. In other words, a new treaty permanently preventing us from making our own trade deals except on the European Union's terms. What kind of a free country is that? Is that what you voted for when you said, leave the European Union? <clears throat> and did you know that both the recent Labour MEPs in Yorkshire and the Humber campaigned against Brexit and all six... Labour candidates in this European election in Labour and the Humber, in, 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 uh, in, in Yorkshire and the Humber, are actively campaigning against Brexit, all six of them. Yes. <clears throat> and, and when we tell these cynical career politicians that they're not listening, what do they tell us? They arrogantly declare that if we really meant what we said when we answered the question they promised to implement, we must be populist. Well, we say to them, when you stopped respecting the popular will, you just lost the right to represent us. So we're coming to the ballot box, and you lot, you're on your way out. Now, now look, lots of us are concerned that our community has been divided by the Brexit debate. We need to heal the divide, and I agree. But let's not be fooled. This deal that Monsieur Barnier has handed down to our government, this can't heal our divide. 
because it fails to address our true problem, our underlying problem, and that is that our elected representatives are not listening to the people who elected them. It's that they won't respect you. Because the difference between us and them and this crop of politicians is that when we say Brexit means Brexit, we mean it. Yeah. And when we say no deal is better than a bad deal, we mean it and we expect you to mean it if you purport to be acting on our behalf. Yeah. And the difference between so many decent, hard-working, caring former supporters of the Labour Party and the party they used to support is that they too believe with us in the Brexit party that in a democracy worthy of the name, our legislators must do what they promised when we sent them to do their job. That's why so many people from across our political spectrum have been coming to the Brexit Party in this extraordinary wave, this shift for, for good and for positivity in British politics. They're demanding competence in our government in place of the elementary negotiating shambles this lot have made of it. They're demanding honesty from our parliamentarians across the spectrum, and yes, that includes from the next MP for Huddersfield. And they're demanding respect, ladies and gentlemen, respect for the will of the people, respect for you. And you know what? We don't deserve it. S yes, sir. <laughs> starting, starting at these European elections on the 23rd of May, and with your support, we're going to deliver it, and together we will change British politics for good. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. And so to our final speaker, gentlemen, who, who needs little, little introduction. This is Barry Sherman. <laughs> well, let me tell you, though, as you heard earlier, you know, Anne's just been warming up. I've had our next speaker, believe it or not, in training. Yes, because he knows this is the biggest battle yet. He's been fighting for the Eurosceptic cause for over 25 years. You talk about courage, the courage that he has shown in the face of vitriol, abuse, threats to his own personal health and well-being, threats to his family, his children, it's unbelievable. But he's stuck with it. He's without question been the most influential person on British politics since the Second World War. Before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of him in action on the video. We have a parliament that is now completely out of touch with our country. I think politics is broken. Our task and our mission is to change politics for good. The Brexit Party has been formed because, very simply, the government and parliament do not wish to deliver Brexit. We are fighting back. The whole of our politics needs changing. The two-party system doesn't work anymore. If they thought we were going to give up, they've got another think coming. This country needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage. Nigel Farage. Make me go all shy. <laughs> Hello, Huddersfield. <laughs> Great to be here in what my friend Geoffrey Boycott tells me is God's own county. Is he right? <laughs> I thought you'd say that. Yorkshire people always do. You know, I've been thinking about it today. There are two things that I've learnt since that referendum, and I think the country has learnt since the referendum. The first is how simply awful the unelected bureaucrats in Brussels are. 
the arrogance, the bullying. One thinks of Mr. Tusk demeaning our Prime Minister. I think of Michel Barnier. Although, to be fair, he's a damn sight better negotiator than our mob, isn't he? I think of Mr. Juncker. Although he's pretty harmless after lunch, I can tell you. I like Juncker. I mean, I realise I haven't got a drink problem compared to him. He cheers me up now, then. And even the elected ones aren't very nice. I think of the snarling Verhofstadt, who clearly hates the United Kingdom and everything we stand for. So I think many people in this country have learned, and even though I'm not a supporter of Theresa May in any way at all, when she goes abroad, she is still our Prime Minister. And to see her talk down to him in this way, to see her allowing herself to be humiliated in this way, I think it's been a disgusting spectacle. I really do. I really do. The other thing I've learnt since the referendum is that even me, after all these years engaged in politics, how naive I've been. Because I've got to tell you, when we voted to leave on the 23rd of June 2016, and when we voted the next year in a general election for a Labour and Conservative Party who both promised us, remember, yes. they'd respect the will of the people. And then what I saw, 498 MPs vote for Article 50, which said, and was passed into British law, we will leave the European Union at 11pm on the 29th of March 2019, and we didn't leave. And I realise, I actually thought that our political class would deliver this, and I've realised that just voting to leave the European Union on its own is simply not enough. We have to replace much of this political class to get politics back to where it needs to be in our country. And so much of this story, so much of this story is about the Conservative Party, how split they are, how frankly duplicitous and dishonest this Prime Minister has been. But the missing part of this national debate is what has been happening with the Labour Party. Remember that Jeremy Corbyn said at the election they would respect the referendum result. And ever since that day, he's been playing this game of constructive ambiguity, which means he's been sitting on the fence. Yes. And to some extent, until now, he's actually been getting away with it. He's been appealing to Remainers in London and Leavers in this part of the world. And the untold part of this story is that here in the north of England, nearly every single one of these traditional Labour seats voted Leave, and you did so in many cases by the biggest margins in the whole of this country. And yet, there I was today in the constituency of Pontefract. 70% of the population voted leave, and their member of parliament, one Yvette Cooper. We're coming to that. Just hold your horses. <laughs> you don't need prompters here, do you? Crikey. <laughs> and Yvette, Yvette Cooper stood up at that election in 2017 and boasted that she'd voted for Article 50 
and she'd make sure we got the right kind of Brexit. She has then spent the last two years doing everything she can to undermine Brexit, to stop Brexit, to force a second referendum. If that is not political betrayal, I don't know what is. But it's even worse than that, because you now have the deputy leader of the Labour Party, Tom Watson, the shadow... Oh, he's quite popular compared to Yvette Cooper, isn't he? <laughs> Let me just try a word on you, a name on you. How about Anna Soubry? <laughs> I was lucky enough to be on Question Time last Thursday <laughs> with Anna Seabury. I really have absolutely no idea quite why she's so pleased with herself, but there we are. <laughs> but I think, uh, I think Change UK. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> be fair. They've changed their name. <laughs> They've changed their logo, <laughs> so it now looks like a Sainsbury's checkout barcode. <laughs> They've changed their Twitter handle, but they, of course, don't want to change anything. <laughs> and they're going to lose their deposits in many seats, and it's the last we're going to hear. <laughs> I'm afraid for Chucker and his chums, the party is over. But back to my theme. So Sir Keir Starmer, the shadow Brexit secretary, along with the deputy leader Tom Watson, they are now, they are, I've got better than that coming, don't you worry about that. <laughs> they are, this is supposed to be, Mr Chairman, a serious political meeting. <laughs> but the element of music all does tend to creep in. And hey, I tell you what, even though this is a serious subject, let's have some fun doing it as well, shall we? Why not? Yeah. But they are both now pushing for what they call a confirmatory referendum. Now that all sounds nice and fluffy and kind and good, doesn't it? It's merely confirmatory, but what would the choice be in that confirmatory referendum? Well, I'll tell you what it would be. It would be the current existing European treaties or a new European treaty that would leave us bound permanently to a customs union and single market rules. The Labour Party, large sections of it, now want to force upon this country a referendum that would not even include an option to leave the European Union. And I think that is a complete and total and utter disgrace. And it's up to you folk here in the North in constituencies which in many cases have been represented by the Labour Party since the end of World War I. They have taken you here for granted. They think you have nobody else to vote for. Well, next Thursday, you've got the Brexit Party to vote for. And I hope you'll do it. And of course, in these European elections here in Yorkshire, topping the Labour list is a man called Richard Corbett, who was, of course, Herman Van Rompuy's bag carrier for a couple of years. One or two of you may have seen my little exchanges with Herman Van Rompuy a few years ago. I, I've spent 20 years trying to get rid of my job as an MEP. 20 years being the turkey that always voted for Christmas. But the one good thing about these European elections is I can go back to the Parliament and give my speeches again in my usual constructive and helpful way. The truth is, folks, this is about more 
than just leaving the European Union. This is about democracy. This is about trust that needs to exist between the government and the people for us to continue to live in a civilised society. This is about the bedrock of all that our civilization is based upon. It's about how the rest of the world sees us. Because frankly, we have been reduced to a laughing stock. And I don't think, I don't think, with this current two-party system, that it now serves anything but the interests of those within it. I think what we need to do is to go out next Thursday to score an extraordinary and unlikely victory, particularly given the fact we didn't even exist five weeks ago. I mean, <laughs> but that, that of itself is simply not enough. We have to go on from there. We have to absolutely make sure that we get the Brexit that we want. And either, either Westminster listens to the message that I hope and pray you are going to send them next Thursday, or we have to prepare for the next general election and replacing those political parties yeah. who've let our country down so badly. We have to be, we have to be more upbeat, more optimistic about who we are as a nation. Let's not be afraid of our flag. Let's not be afraid of identity. Let's be proud to be British and be patriotic. Let's do that. Is the election broadcast been shown yet? Is it ready? It's ready. Yeah. I'll show it, shall I? Yeah. On that theme of being upbeat, I've been asked whether I'm going around the country stirring up anger. I'm not. We're going around the country saying to people, don't get mad, get even. Let's be positive about this. And to that end, to that end, I'm going to show you tonight a sneak preview of our party election broadcast that will go out on television later this week. And I hope you agree with me that it's a positive upbeat message. Let's roll. <laughs> gave their lives for the right to vote. To be able to change the things they didn't like. We thought our votes meant something. But we've been let down. We've been betrayed. Our country has been humiliated. By politicians. Those who we trusted with our vote. We deserve so much better than this. Politics is broken and our democracy is under threat. Enough is enough. It's time to change politics for good. That's why I'm standing. That's why I am standing. I am standing. I am standing. That's why I'm leading the Brexit party in the European elections on May the 23rd. It's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. So my community isn't decimated by politicians who don't listen. And that's why I'm standing for the Brexit party. Because we deserve better. We deserve politicians we can trust and who deliver on their promises. There is a huge disconnect between the MPs and the people. We have all seen what can happen when people lose faith in democracy. MPs can no longer be trusted. 
to represent the will of the people. They say we didn't know what we voted for. That we're stupid. That we're racist. But we're none of those things. We are ordinary people. Business people. We are brothers. Sisters. Fighters. We are doctors. Entrepreneurs. We are the 17.4 million people who voted to leave. And we deserve to be heard. We believe that without democracy, we have nothing. We all deserve to be heard, and in June 2016, 17.4 million of us voted to leave the European Union. And here we are, three years on, and nothing has been delivered. Our vote has been betrayed. This is about more than Brexit. It's about democracy, our country, how the rest of the world sees us. Our politics is broken, and it's time we did something about it. The Brexit party is about change. You can do something with your vote. Vote for the Brexit party and change politics politics for good. Vote for the Brexit party on May the 23rd and let's change politics for good. So come on. We can do so much better, can't we? We can stand up for the democratic principles that make us a great country, can't we? Yes. We can score a great victory against the establishment next Thursday in those European elections. Yes. I need to ask you, are you with us? Yes. Will you help us? Yes. Will you spread that message and get people down to the ballot box next Thursday? Yes. Thank you, Huddersfield! I wasn't wrong, was I? I said... I said he'd been in training. I said he was just warming up. He is back. And we are going to win next Thursday. And that is just the beginning. We need your help. If you haven't signed up as a registered supporter, please do. You can also, if you don't like online banking, understandable for some, do send a cheque to the address on the party website. Because policy is expensive and we need everybody's help. Now, we have just got time for a few questions, and we'll give Nigel a quick breather. Um, so, Anne, uh, if I could ask you a question from Dennis from Heckmondwick. <laughs> I've got that one, haven't I? All right. <laughs> I'm a humble bloke. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just a warm-up act, really. Here we go. I won't try that again. <laughs> it's a very simple question. When are we actually going to leave? Well, it doesn't look as if that's going to happen any time soon, does it? It was going to happen on the 29th of March. It was going to happen on the 12th of April. It was going to happen at the end of June. And now, allegedly, it's going to happen on Halloween. <laughs> do you expect it to happen on Halloween? And if we do leave, do you expect us to be really leaving on Halloween? Well, that's the answer, so I'll tell you when we're going to leave. We're going to leave when the Brexit party is running the show. The great thing about Anne is you're never left in any doubt as to where she stands. <laughs> Now, I've learned my lesson. The next question's from Sarah. <laughs> For John, actually. Uh, John, the CBI are anti-Brexit. What is your message to them about Brexit and the Brexit party? I'll let, you into, I'll let you into a little secret. I'll let you into a little secret. I was actually chairman of a major committee in the CBI for a long time. I was actually their economic spokesperson, believe it or not, when I was doing international business. And I know their secrets. I know where they keep their skeletons in the cupboards. I sat in front of a parliamentary committee in 2016, and the chairman of that committee asked the head of the CBI, Carolyn Fairburn. I think, I think she deserves a bit of a boo, don't you? Mm. Carolyn Fairburn. 
he asked her five times how many actual voting policy making members the CBI have and do you know she refused to answer five times and I'll tell you why I'll tell you why she refused to answer because while they claim they have 190,000 businesses represented they actually only have 1,500 who make the decisions and the decision making panel is only 50 multinationals they don't represent business in the UK if you put together all of the business groups Combined, they only represent one in five businesses. And I know the organisations like the British Chambers, even those organisations and the Federation of Small Businesses, half of those members wanted to leave. They haven't done any surveys since the referendum because they don't. Because they don't tell the population that business wants to leave the European Union. Because it's no good for business. The European Union is a rotten organisation, it's protectionist, and it doesn't allow business to prosper. And we in Britain can trade the world, and we can hold our own, and everybody can be better off as a consequence. Yeah. <laughs> We always get the question, we can have a bit of fun in politics, and we always get the question, Nigel, what's your favourite beer? But I think in, this, in the John Smith Stadium, that's probably not <laughs> quite fair. <laughs> um, so I'll take a question instead from Gary. What can we do at the local level to change the current political climate? Gary, Nigel. Well, I think the answer to that is very simple. That we've got a set of elections coming up next week, a national election, a European election, and here's one of the problems. One of the problems is that for many people, they are so disgusted that their vote's been ignored, that promises have been broken, that there's a danger from our side of the argument that many like us, who want this to be a free, independent country, are so hacked off, they might stay at home. So on a local level, the answer is, what you can do is you can get out there, you can take some posters with you this evening, we can send you some leaflets and get out in your street, in your town, in your village, in your, wherever you live, your local pub, if that's where you spend your time. <laughs> I'm too busy for that at the moment. But you can go out and spread the message and when you find, where you find people, who feel utterly disenchanted with the process, say to them that if they stay at home, the other side win. We have got to get a sense of optimism, a sense of opportunity, a sense that in many ways, the way we've been treated now makes us even more determined than we were three years ago to get back control of our democracy, our nation and our children's future. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, before we go, let's send a very loud, noisy message down to Westminster. Let's have all your placards in the air, everyone on their feet. What do we want? Brexit! Brexit. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Brexit! When do we want it? Now! Thank you very much indeed, ladies and gentlemen. Have a very safe trip home.